Let's say you're in the process of building a fluid page, like I am here, and you're testing your page, which of course involves data entry, as I've done here, and you're getting ready to save. You made a change to the data and you're getting ready to save. You look in the lower left corner and you realize there's no save button. Now in classic, the component would have controlled the save button and well, we would have had one by default, but the component properties, we could turn off the save button. So let's do that. Let's go back to the component. Let's look at an application designer and see if we can figure out how are the component properties set here in Fluid. So looking at the component properties, again, this is exactly what I would do in Classic. I come and I look and I see, oh, the save button is still enabled. Interesting, but it's not here, is it? Well, interesting thing about the checkboxes here, you know, if it was Classic, we would uncheck the box to take the save button away. In Fluid, well, it's checked, it's not there. If we uncheck it, huh, it's still not there. But this save checkbox here still controls the hotkeys. You know, in Classic, if you hover over those buttons across the bottom, you'll see some hotkeys such as Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3, etc. Save is Alt-1. So I can see the save, fu save function still works, but it's not here. So the question is, where is the save button? You know, I have a question for you. Where would you like it? <laughs> where would you like to put the save button? Hey, let's save that for conversation for a little bit later, but right now, let's figure out how do you put a save button on a Fluid page. So here in Application Designer, I'm going to open the page, the page that I'm working on here on the screen. I'm going to add a save button. Okay, great. So look for the push button hyperlink, and I'll just put one on the page here. It doesn't really matter where I put it, does it? No, because this is Fluid. And remember, Fluid controls layout. It's a, that's a key difference between Classic and Fluid. Classic, what you see is mostly what you get. Drag and drop controls layout. Fluid, the rendering engine controls layout. So it really doesn't matter where you put a button. The Fluid rendering engine is going to determine where to place it at runtime based on the rules of the rendering engine. And buttons, I'll just tell you this, buttons render different than data entry fields. Okay, here, let's just put it here in the middle just so we can see that. And, oh, you know, I'm thinking, okay, have you ever implemented save functionality for a page before? Even in Classic, where perhaps you wanted to control save so you created your own button for save? You ever done that? I have. Usually there was other people code logic that I wanted to go along with that. So I would write the save logic in a derived work record. Do I have to write people code here? Do I need a derived work record so I can implement save in Fluid? No, actually, fortunately not. Instead, if we look at the button properties, you'll notice that there are the different sections. So I've got actions, process, secondary page, action widget, external link, internal link, related content event. And if we look at the destinations, you'll notice these destinations here match up to those different sections within the properties. So if I want to implement, say, a people tools action, I can choose toolbar action, and then the actions section becomes visible, and then I can select what action I want. Now, interesting, if you look at the list of actions here, they match up with those buttons that are usually across the bottom of an older classic page. Uh, like, for example, hey, there's save. You know what? Let's go ahead and copy that label, and then let's go over to the label tab. Let's change it to text, standard text, and then paste the label text there of save. I'll say OK save, and let's reload our page. Notice aisle stays there, and oh, look at that, there's a save button. Now, I'm clearly pointing out here to you that the Fluid Rendering Engine controls layout. As you can see here, the save button, I put it in the center, but it's appearing over on the far left. Now, where you place that button is really up to you, and we can use style classes, group boxes, etc., to control that layout. That's something that we cover in our Fluid class, our Fluid training class. But I do want to leave you with one style class here. Let's say that you have a, a button on a page, and you want to mark that button as the primary action. Make it visibly different from all other buttons, and save, save is typically the primary action. So let's do this. Let's apply a style class, PSC underscore primary, as our style class. And what that's going to do is mark the save button as the primary action. As you can see, the color has changed here. Now in 854 through 57, that color using the default theme delivered by People Tools would have been green. But we can see here with 858, it has a nice shade of blue. 
So now we know how to add a button, but we should still answer that question of where. Where should we put this button? See, Fluid frees us from the contract, the unwritten classic contract that says action buttons always go at the bottom left corner. Now, interesting, you know, when you start asking that, answering that question, where should we place the buttons? Well, the question I might ask is, where does Oracle place the buttons? And that's a really good question. You see, if you look at the typical Fluid page, just the plain old standard page, employee self-service, manager self-service, you won't find a save button on the page itself. Instead, the save button goes in a modal dialog that pops up. See, oftentimes what you find is these self-service pages start as read-only with a pop-up modal dialog for then maintaining the data that is within that self-service page. So the save button, you'll find it usually in the header of the modal dialog that appears. Now, what about other pages? Because other pages can have action buttons as well. For example, if we were to open the approvals page, what you'd find on desktop is the buttons go in the upper right corner of the sticky header. And then what you find on mobile, this is what I find is interesting, the buttons go in the bottom in a sticky footer. Sticky footer means it's always visible. You see, personally, what's my preference? My preference is to put all of the buttons at the bottom of the page. Okay, wait, why? Why would you do that? See, one of the challenges that we have with Classic is that when we put buttons at the bottom of the page, they're hard to find because oftentimes we have so much data on the page that the buttons go off screen. And so your users have to scroll to find those buttons. You see, I like buttons at the bottom for two reasons. One is consistency. That's where they were always at in Classic. The other one is consistency. That's where you'll find them on mobile. See, on your mobile devices, those buttons dating all the way back to WAP and WML, you know, when we had early mobile devices, those buttons would be defined using the wireless markup language, and then the they would appear to be part of the device, built right into the UI of the device. So I like that. I like that concept. But how do you keep them from scrolling off the page, being invisible? That's a great question. That's something that we cover in our Fluid class as well. That would be what we call a sticky footer. At JSM Pros, we believe Fluid is one of the most important people tools technologies to learn today. After all, it is Oracle's strategic direction. And that is why we teach Fluid several times per month. Be sure to check out our website to see when we're offering it next. Or here's an idea. Subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a new course. Or do you have a team that wants to learn Fluid? Give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have a topic you'd like us to cover in future Soundbytes? Let us know by sharing your idea at soundbytes.jsmpros.com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.